Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my brothers and sisters in Islam. Alhamdulillah, welcome back. Uh, you know, we had a wonderful kids show that just happened an hour ago. And also, I was just informed by our wonderful volunteers that have just delivered 1,000 food packs uh, to the shelters and also to the NHS workers, as well as 500 chocolate boxes, which I'm a little bit hungry with now. But uh, today, Alhamdulillah, as mentioned, we are going to have some very, very special guests. And with me, joining me right now is Sheikh Ibrahim Mogra. Sheikh Ibrahim is not only an imam in Leicester, uh, but he's also a member of the Muslim Council of Britain, uh, which, as you know, is, a, uh, is an organization that helps with a lot of the political issues that some of the Muslims and the Muslim community is facing. And Alhamdulillah, we're very, very honored to have Sheikh Ibrahim on today. And I would like to welcome you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sheikh. How are you? Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The honor is all mine, Sheikh. Thank you so much for this very warm introduction and welcome. Yeah, no. well, my family is all well, and I pray that all of our viewers, uh, the same goes for them, that they're all well and keeping safe. No, mashallah, alhamdulillah, Sheikh. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm looking at you, and I'm a little bit happy. And, and please forgive me for my joy, because one of the weirdest things that I've had to do this Ramadan, I'm not on YouTube. I've never been on webinars. So looking at myself, I'm seeing how my beard has become white. And <laughs> alhamdulillah, I remember when I first met you, mashallah, both of our beards were black. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> But mashallah, Allah has blessed you with a lot of noor on your face, mashallah. Thank you as well, Sheikh Abdul, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Sheikh, I have a question for you. Uh, as you know, we're, we're, we're trying to do an initiative called the World Iftar Day. And on this initiative, what we want to do is we want to bring uh, unity through the World Iftar Day. I want you to give us your perspective of what you understand, not just the essence of Ramadan, but what do you feel about the World Iftar Day and how it can impact the lives of those that are Muslim and non-Muslim? Allow me to say, Sheikh Abdul, that your uh, initiative is an amazing initiative. It's much needed in our troubled world, uh, a very polarized world, and to demonstrate that uh, Muslims are people of compassion, of care, and of generosity. And on this World Iftar Day, when we share our food, just not just with our own fam family and household, but also with our neighbors through the Masajid, through the different charity organizations, and just by ourselves, I think is a gesture to the a, a clear indication that Muslims are good people to have as neighbors. Uh, so I congratulate you and your entire team for this amazing initiative. Uh, may Allah give all the success that it deserves. Ramadan is Jazakallah Khair for this. I would like to say one thing, Sheikh, before you go on with regards to Ramadan, is that uh, the 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 initiative in terms of starting uh, was actually based off of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That uh, is, you know, the the hadith, the Afshu Salam wa Atimu Taam was was Wasilul Arham. You know where Rasulullah. Yeah, subhanallah. Yeah. Yeah. Allahu Akbar. Allah, that's beautiful. And yeah, please do translate that for our viewers and listeners. Um Sheikh, if you will. Yeah, so 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 the Prophet sallallahu he said, Ya Ayyuan Nas, he's not even addressing just the Muslims. He's saying, Oh mankind, spread salam, spread peace throughout the world and uh and greet one another with, with the greeting of salam, and then feed each other which is such a key thing. You know what I mean? Keep the ties and bonds of kinship strong. Pray your salah while others are sleeping. Yes. And that will be your entry into Jannah with salah. Allahu Akbar. I love this hadith. It's so beautiful. Uh, and every time I read it, the, the hair on my neck just stands because it's so powerful. This is a, a an advice given to the muhajirun, the early... Uh, refugees and migrants of Muslims who have been persecuted in Mecca and were fleeing to Medina. And the advice they're given is when you go to this new community where you're going to make your home, then you must not only greet people with salam, but you must be peaceful people. Be peaceful. 
and feed others, share your food, and, and pray to God in the dead of the night. SubhanAllah, it's an amazing, amazing hadith. So thank you for that. You're right, this initiative goes back to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself, uh, that feeding others uh, is one of the most touching things. Uh, it, it's, it's amazing. I've been on journeys, I'm sure you have, and many of the viewers, either on an airplane or on a train. And every time I've I had some nuts or some crisps or something or a piece of uh, or, or chocolate to to eat and i've offered it to the people sat next to me it just breaks the ice and suddenly you become like you've known each other for such a long time and you you chat all the way and before you know it you've arrived at your destination so breaking of bread as they say is something that unites humanity and this why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also in the quran encourages all of us <laughs> to feed others, particularly the poor, the hungry, uh, the orphans and the needy. Now, Sahih, Sahih. Now, Sheikh, I have a question for you. So this initiative this year, obviously because of the, the pandemic that we're going through, uh, we're not able to go and physically have communal iftars. We can't even go to our own families, our homes, and the masajids are closed. What and and what we've what we've decided is okay. Let's do it virtually in terms of not even a virtual iftar like everyone getting together and breaking iftar together. It's just having look, send in pictures and videos. Next year, our initiative is where we're going to look at three cities and we're going to do the physical iftar for Muslim and non-Muslims. What would you suggest for us as we're a budding organization starting to come through? Hopefully, this becomes accepted by the UN. What do you suggest that we do? Subhanallah, this uh, uh, obviously needs a lot of uh, strategizing and planning. It needs to be done in a coordinated way. And if you're thinking of three cities, I hope that uh, if not less than London would be one of those cities, uh, the capital city of the United Kingdom. So I'm selfish, a bit of bias there. Um, but I think uh, we can look to some of the activities that are already taking place with regards to communal iftars and learn from their experience uh, and see how they organize things. And we simply add to that and make this global in the hope that the UN will officially recognize this amongst other world days as an important day for all of humanity to respect, to observe, and to mark uh, Muslim and non-Muslim alike. I just want to add something here. I, I myself, uh, having been deeply involved in interfaith work for many, many years, uh, I'm absolutely clear in my mind that Muslims should worship in the Muslim way, and uh, Islam does not permit us to take part in the rituals of other uh, worship activities, etc. And so one would want to respect oh same to others that non-Muslim people, though, we would not expect them to uh, to fast or to pray Salah uh, and perform uh, all the other rituals of Islam. But what I would like to say is the iftar is not so much about you have to have been fasting as a non-Muslim all day long for you to enjoy and uh, be part of the world iftar day you can be yourself you could have had your breakfast your lunch your tea whatever but when it comes to sunset time join us join the muslims of the world as we eat for the first time on that day uh, you can have your own meal and in, inshallah when the lockdown and all this is over we would be more than happy to share our food with you and yeah. what's amazing for me is that I and many other Muslims in the United Kingdom, and I know of other countries as well, have been invited by Jews, by Christians, by people of other faith communities, and indeed of no faith and of no religion for an iftar. And they have taken the trouble to ensure that the food is suitable for Muslims, it's halal, and it's prepared in the right way. So sharing of food is something that should come naturally to all of us as human beings. And I think, uh, uh, Bearing all that in mind, I, I see that this initiative has every potential uh, of success uh, and to be recognized by the UN. Uh, I would say that uh, uh, you would obviously have to look at uh, uh, the dietary requirements of our guests. 
Uh, Delhi, for example, if we have uh, people from the Dharmic uh, religions, Hinduism, uh, the Sikh uh, religion, and others who may be vegetarian, who may be um, people who uh, do not eat certain kinds of foods that Muslims eat, then we have to cater for them. It, the last thing we want is for our guests to turn up and not find something that is suitable for them. Uh, vegans are a very important uh, community in the world today uh, so these it's these little this these little details which could be overlooked uh, inadvertently so i think if we can be mindful of that uh, that would be really wonderful and uh, we would be uh, a, a a an exemplary uh, host for our non muslim no no alhamdulillah alhamdulillah thank you so much for that advice because that is one of the things that we are doing uh, is we've made sure that all of the food that we distributed today was all vegetarian based Very we're, and, and vegan based. Actually, it was all vegan based. Uh, we're looking at other aspects uh, in terms of what other things we can contribute towards. So we're looking at using recyclable uh, containers, you know, for the distribution. Uh, you know, water is a little bit of a tricky thing because they all come in uh, in plastic bottles. Uh, and this year, unfortunately, we were only able to put them in plastic containers because obviously all the shops are closed. All the all the outlets where we can get the recyclable containers are closed. But we are looking at having recyclable goods. We're also looking at uh, how we can have an inver not have an environmental negative impact, but a positive yeah. impact, all the while feeding people. Now, one of the things that I do have a question on, and, and this is something that... Uh, that I've spoken to my ustads about as well. And I would love to hear your perspective. When we sit down, you always will have the hard, difficult individuals that don't want to see the positive in this, that will think that we're trying to Islamify them or, or to convert them by giving them food, right? You, you have certain people that say, oh, because of halal, you know, you become certain things. How do you go about trying to bring them into the fold and letting them understand the beauty of what Islam teaches us. I think it is our duty to reassure them and to make them feel safe and secure, uh, to share with them, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitani Rajeem, Innama Ta'imukum Liwajhillah La Nuridu Minkum Jaza'an Wala Shukura That we are only sharing this with you to please our God, to please Allah, we do not expect or uh, desire any thanks from you or anything in return from you. We do not expect you to become Muslims. We simply want to be good neighbors. We simply want to be friends with you. I think that's very important. We must do that. The world has experienced, sadly, uh, through Christian missionary work and evangelism and proselytizing, uh, some, some, I can't say all of them, some poor practice on the part of Christian missionaries where uh, it is said that they, there's a, a loaf of bread in one hand and the Bible in the other hand. No. And that's something we as Muslims, obviously we are not permitted. Islam does not allow us to do that. Uh, la ikraha fi deen, there is no compulsion. We cannot use bribes or anything like that. But because we are a faith group, people begin to put all faith groups into the same basket and perhaps uh, begin to think that Muslims are also like some of those Christians of the past and of today as well. Uh, and so uh, I think we will keep, we will have to keep working hard to reassure them, uh, but we can't force people to come. If, if they wish not to attend because they are apprehensive about something, we must respect their, their choice. Maybe their friends who have turned up will go back and tell them some amazing and they will regret not having come and they'll look forward to that. No, no. And, and, and I agree with you fully. You know, you'll have some that will come, some that won't come. One of the things that we're actually looking at doing is do we, and, and this is a conversation that's ongoing with, uh, with some of my advisors and some of the, or the, the my teachers, uh, and I would love to get your input also, is we do this already throughout the Ramadan in the masajids where for the Muslims, we cater to them for 30 days. The ultimate goal of the project is no human goes to sleep hungry at night in the month of Ramadan. And inshallah, 
being able to expand it out throughout the year. But I want we've got clear goals that one day throughout the month of Ramadan for the next five years to seven years, build up enough momentum that then we're able to do it throughout all of Ramadan. And that's not just for the Muslims, it's for the Muslims and non-Muslim. So one of the suggestions that I was given was, well, why don't we keep it in the masjid so that we can have it for the Muslims and the non-Muslim? And I was saying, well, we can either do that or we can keep it where you keep it outside in an outdoor venue, have tents put up. But what would you suggest in terms of doing that? Or do you have pickup points? MashaAllah. May Allah realize your dream. It's an amazing um, dream. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is great. And when we are sincere and we show him our true efforts, the fruits of that will be enjoyed by all of humanity. May Allah make that day come when your dream uh, becomes a reality. I think it does not have to be either or. We can have both models. Uh, it's very important and a very good opportunity for us to showcase the masjid, to welcome non-Muslims who may never have been to a masjid before, for them to come and to see what it's all about. Because many have this fear of the unknown. They are not sure of what happens and what goes on in the mosque. So it's a good excuse for them to be able to not just come uh, and enjoy a hearty meal with us, to see our place of worship, maybe even observe us as we pray and they uh, pick out whatever uh, they see and they find beautiful. Uh, I think a, a an independent, separate location also has its merits. Uh, of course, we have uh, some uh, restricted premises with regards to uh, all the fiqhi and uh, jurisprudence matters about uh, dress code and gender, etc. A neutral venue uh, perhaps helps us to overcome uh, that. Uh, Am I allowed to share one a beautiful example of what happens here in the UK uh, with uh, Ramadan in the tent? I think that's what it's called, where they put up a, a, a marquee. We had one in the city of Leicester last Ramadan. Uh, it was right outside the town hall and it was open to all members of the Leicester communities. And it was amazing, wonderful to see Muslims, non-Muslims, people from all walks of, uh, of life, from all backgrounds coming together, uh, listening to a few words from uh, distinguished guests. And we had an amazing uh, mm -hmm. on that day. So uh, that has its merit, uh, but I'm also inviting people to Inshallah. No, no, that's wonderful. I mean, I think it was, it's called the Ramadan tent project. Mm -hmm. I would like to partner with you guys. I would like to partner with the Ramadan tent project. I think there's another project open iftar. I think there are various projects there's here in Bristol. We've got the grand iftar uh, that takes place every year. Also uh, it's just swollen with thousands of people. We would love, and there's a taste mm -hmm. Ramadan also. We would love to do, you know, you know, Umar with regard to Tarawi and even the Prophet وسلم, he said it's better to pray in congregation, which gives you the ishara that doing things ibadah in congregation where they're allowed, it is very necessary for us to do that. And that's one of the initiatives of the World Iftar Day. I saw where we were having pockets of where this is happening, which I don't want to stop. I love for that to happen, but I would like for all of the organizations for all of us to come together. I don't care if they want to rename it. You know what I mean? We can rename it, whatever it is. I just want something when I pass away that there's Sadaqah al Jariyah that we revived the Sunnah of giving food and feeding those, number one, the fasting person, and the second, of just giving food to Ya Ayyuhannas. That is my ultimate goal. So if you can help me with that, Alhamdulillah, I will be more than happy. I I, I am willing to uh, to become the khadim that that is that is serving the food because that's the position that I love being in. Inshallah. So I I lost uh, you you a bit there, but uh, I think um, all these initiatives uh, that have been going on for some time, some of them for longer than others, uh, ought to continue. Um, I don't think that there is a need for everything to merge into one one big thing, but they can all be iftars which can perhaps begin to adopt the World Iftar Day umbrella, if you like, over them, uh, so that uh, it is seen as part of a global movement. 
Uh, but it is uh, very possible that once uh, you have negotiations and you sit down with uh, the organizers of all the various kinds of iftars, uh, they would be more than happy, I'm sure, um, to make this into a really, truly global and world iftar. Inshallah. Now, Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Ibrahim. I know you're very busy. Uh, you've given us more than the 15 minutes that we had requested it, from you. It, it, a delight. It's been a pleasure and especially to reconnect with you. I'm just so thrilled. Uh, <laughs> Inshallah, when I come back to Leicester, when I come up to Leicester, because my wife uh, has a lot of relatives in Leicester and mashallah, mm -hmm. Leicester is like Odomaville. <laughs> it's, it's where all the scholars are. When I, I come up there, we, we have... We we like to call it Leicester Sharif. Leicester Sharif. No, no, that's Birmingham Sharif. <laughs> but inshallah, I, it will be, be a pleasure to to host you. Please come and visit. Inshallah. And also, I look forward to seeing you at our BBSI meetings as well. Inshallah. Inshallah, it's a discussion to be had and to be continued. Inshallah. 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 All right, I love you for the sake of Allah. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Ibrahim. Abakallah. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ah, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah al khair to Sheikh Ibrahim Mogra. Mashallah, what a wonderful, wonderful person. He's someone that I actually met um, probably about nine or ten years ago, and he hasn't changed. Mashallah, beautiful character, and the way he explains things with a smile on his face is just. Excellent. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him uh, for coming on. Inshallah, we have another guest uh, that was scheduled to be here at 8 p.m. Uh, but mashallah, he is here early, which is awesome. So we'll get to get a little bit more time uh, because I've only got 50, uh, about 30 minutes with him, I think. And then we've got another special guest after him. Uh, inshallah, it'll be Sheikh Omar Suleiman. I'm pretty sure everyone's heard of him as well. But I would like to introduce Imam Arshad. Uh, if we can, uh, if we can bring Imam Arshad on. Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Imam Arshad. How are you? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, by the great and blessings of Allah, doing well. How are you, Sheikh? I'm doing good. I'm doing good, Imam Arshad. I have to tell you a funny story. Uh, so, so Subhanallah, my sister. I, I was I was born in Miami, but grew up in Atlanta, right? My I started. Yeah, so I started my tahfid and then, you know, al Farooq and everything. We were one of the uh, original, uh, very few Muslim families that were in Atlanta. So my sister is still there. My dad and my sister are still yeah. there. And she attends your classes. And uh, and all of a sudden, when I, when I was telling her about this initiative, and my wife was telling her about this initiative, uh, she was like, oh, my God, my brother is into these crazy things. Then all of a sudden, <laughs> I get this video. Where you and the Masjid Committee are passing along a tray of dates, and I have to tell you, Imam Arshad, and to those that are listening and watching, you have to see this passing around. It's on the Instagram channel. But Imam Arshad, you did all of the Imams proud. You took all the pakoras. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, Mashallah. We have to keep up the tradition. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> no, Mashallah. But I have to say, you know, and 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 I'm going to get a little bit serious right now. But uh, yeah. but Alhamdulillah, I I saw how the uh, the committee members, the masjid, are engaged in doing activities that the youth are looking at. What is your secret sauce? You know, honestly, it's uh, having a lot of input uh, from every sector of the community. I mean, these uh, everybody that's on the message board, the committees, the that's a volunteer. They're just a representation of uh, who the community actually is. And so it just takes uh, a little bit of uh, openness to listen to what people have to say and not be a little not be a little afraid to get your feet wet. <laughs> no. 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 Do you do you do you see uh that activity bringing in more youth do you find that that's very useful alhamdulillah i think it's really about the vibe that the, that 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 the, the masjid creates and as long as there is a just you know a, a a an open welcoming vibe to the masjid that will always always attract people and you know this is the video is maybe something even probably the the youth didn't expect uh, us to do but <laughs> but it is you know, it's it's about the overall the overall vibe that we try to maintain in the masjid, uh, making sure that everybody that walks in those doors understands that this is a place that they belong and this is a house of Allah subhanahu wa taala and the houses of Allah are open 
for uh, for for anyone that wants to connect with him. Subhanallah. No, no, no. Alhamdulillah. Now, uh, Imam Arshad, I've got to I've got to ask you. Um, I mean, mashallah, your video actually catapulted everyone else to come in. We were we were getting a lot of engagement by pictures and uh, and even voiceovers. But when we published your video, with your permission, I have to make make sure I get the yes, of the, course, of course. <laughs> But, but when we did that, everyone else started doing it. And then I was forced to do a video as well. So <laughs> you got me out of my shell. What Coming back to the seriousness of the World Iftar Day project, as you know, yeah. the initiative is to bring everyone, whether you're Muslim or non-Muslim, together on one day to have iftar. What do you feel that that can bring about in terms of peace, unity, and what effect it can have in the world? No, subhanAllah. You know, uh, breaking bread together has been one of those things that throughout uh, the centuries, people have found a as a successful means to bring hearts closer together. Uh, whenever people have difference of opinion, uh, no matter how strong they may be, inviting each other and sitting down with one another over food specifically, uh, it's, it has something to do with the human psyche that I think, I'm not sure if it has been studied, but it really should be studied. But when you are eating with someone, and that is why our Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may peace and blessings be upon him, you know, when he entered into the new city of Medina, after, you know, leaving his hometown of Mecca, uh, and, and he came into the city, the first piece of advice he gave people was, spread the salam, and then right after that, you know, give each other greetings, and at'imu ta'am, feed one yeah. another. And, and this wasn't just feed the poor. It's, you know, feed everybody, feed one another, feed your neighbors, feed your family. And subhanAllah, even till this day, you know, sitting with your family at dinner is one of the proven strategies for a healthy family, that you guys actually sit together and share a meal. And so I think it goes uh, beyond, uh, you know, just, just saying that this is something that works. And so getting people together, if we can do it on a larger scale, uh, you know, uh, presidents of countries will invite Muslim leaders to do iftar, you know, because they understand the engagement that happens over food. And so if we can take a little bit of time, share a little meal, and, you know, some, subhanAllah, usually when we argue with one another or we have things that that may not we may not understand about each other, the easiest way to dispel any of that is just by sharing food together. You know, you pass somebody something uh, that's going to fill their 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 hunger or their thirst. It, it 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 does something to the way they feel about you. The human heart is connected uh, in amazing ways. Subhanallah. So this is beautiful what, we're, what you guys are trying to do. No, Jazakallah khair. And you know, Subhanallah, it's so amazing that you've actually brought up the hadith uh, because I was just mentioning previously, and also when I was being interviewed by the BBC, uh, they said that are you the founder of the uh, of the project or are you the initiator of of this project? And I said, no, I'm not. So they were a little bit confused and they said, well, wait a minute, <laughs> why are we talking to you? And I yeah. said, the initiator of this project was the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the person looked back that was interviewing and he was like, okay. And he said, well, how? And that's the hadith that I quoted. Yeah. I said, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he doesn't say, ya ayyuhal muslimun. He says, ya ayyuhal nas afshu salam then arham niyam, and then he says jannata bis salam. Yeah, subhanallah. Can you imagine? He's calling on all of mankind to spread salam, and then to feed others, and also maintaining ties of kinship. Because I think this is where the most important aspect comes from. Yeah. A lot of times, what we're facing, especially with this lockdown, we're seeing. A lot of issues, marital issues, because you're just not used to being at home. And some of the advice that I've given, and 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 I would love to hear some of the advice that you've given uh, with regards to, you know, where they say that, you know, you're, you're in my space type of thing. But maintaining those bonds, if we focus on our bonds and the bonds of our neighbors and the bonds of community, I think salam starts to go. But what would you say in terms of breaking and doing iftar? Some of the things that the Prophet ﷺ has prescribed, like eating from the same plate, what would you suggest for couples and parents with their children? What should they do in order to build that muhabba and that love at the time of iftar? SubhanAllah. You know, uh, for, for us as Muslims, everything begins with the heart. 
everything starts at the level of the most deepest down, you know, recesses of your of your soul. And so the very first thing uh, that that I would suggest for individuals to do is to work on their intentions, to just dig deep down inside and say, you know, what is it that I really want? Because we can fake sometimes a lot of these uh, practices, right? We can sit with people because we have to. And we f- if we feel like we're sitting with them because we have to, then that engagement is only going to be to that level, right? But if we can kind of take a little bit of time, talk to ourselves, say a little prayer and say, no, I'm going to sit with this person because I need to and I want to, because this is my responsibility, because this is my, you know, this is the right that this person has over me and family has a huge right uh, over us. So when we work on the perspective by which we engage in any situation, that is what can really have an impact. People can feel what you, what you, you know, the vibe that you bring. You can tell when someone's being fake and you can tell when someone's being genuine. You know, when you go to the grocery store and you get in line and then you're, you're at the checkout line and the person at the counter says, you know, uh, hey, how are you doing? I hope you're having a great day. Right now, they can say it because they're genuinely saying. A lot of times, they're saying it because they're told by their, bo- their boss, "You have to say this." Right, and sometimes you yeah. can feel that it's not genuine. It's just you have to say it, and that's why you're saying it. You know, uh, but when when you are genuine with the way that you are doing things, it really comes off, and that is the impact that you have on the heart of the other person. And so, starting from that that level of I want to, I need to, and this is important to me. That that inner perspective is extremely important, and then after that, you know, make the dua. Uh, you know, uh, Allah guide our steps. Allah give us good in this life and the next. When you when you when you fix what's inside of you and, and the way that you're addressing a situation, Subhanallah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will open the doors up, will guide you, uh, because He is the one that shows you the right path. Will guide your tongue to say the right things, Inshallah, will guide you to engage in the best uh, best of manners. And again, as long as we can remember, you know, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace and blessings be upon him. Uh, you know, uh, one of the which is concise ad- pieces of advice that I always give, but no matter what the situation, uh, you know, he said that uh, rifku fi shayin illa zana, that there you will not find gentleness in anything except that it makes it beautiful, and then the opposite, you will not find it removed from anything except that it will be uh, it will be very uncomfortable and awkward. And so, the more gentle we can be, and the more honest we can be about our 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 true intentions then inshallah that'll have that'll go a long long way no 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 subhanallah such beautiful advice i mean that's the key right is is nia and your inner self the tazkiyah that you do of purifying your own self and starting with you know i always say tazkiyah uh you have tazkiyah to ta'am you have tazkiyah to tarah you've got tazkiyah to nafs you know you've got such different aspects of tazkiyah that you go through but the, yeah. the most important tazkiyah is the tazkiyah of the heart. And that's what builds uh, that's what builds relations. And in times of of these, such as such as the ones we're living in, because these are very unprecedented times, even though we had the we had the pandemic a hundred years ago. What mm-hmm. I'm advising to couples, parents, children, this is the ultimate time to get to know one another. Find oh. out what you like about one another. And the other thing that I've, that I've been saying, and I don't know if, if, uh, if, if, if this is the best advice, but one thing that I'm telling couples to do and children to do is dress up as if you're going to go to work, dress up like you would, as if you're going out, don't lounge around in your night ground throughout the day. Don't, don't, don't make yourself, Appealing to yourself first, because if you feel good, the other person, like you said, rightfully said, those vibes come off to the others as well. You know Absolutely. what I mean? So that's excellent. Now, in terms of food, because this is this is the ultimate thing, right? At the time of iftar, gratefulness. But at the time of iftar, and I have to ask you this because I love pakoras and I saw how many pakoras you took. <laughs> 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 I'm coming to your house to have those pakoras, but but in the. The question that I've got for you is, with regards to food, cooking-wise, how mm. should we be in our homes? Should we be sharing the, the duties? Uh, because that's something that can build relations, right? SubhanAllah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we're, we're all in this together. And, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's a beautiful p- part of your, your interactions with your family are in uh, kind of maybe understanding uh, and appreciating what every member of the family contributes. 
Uh, so, you know, sharing in responsibilities is a great way. It's not just, you know, this is your responsibility or this is my responsibility. It's about creating that compassion for one another. And so when we uh, are asking our children to help out in the house, for example, you know, again, our intention should be, we want you to understand what we contribute to the house and we want you to have a little part in it as well. So when you when you actually do part of the chores, you understand that, you know, oh, it's not just something easy. It is something essential and it's not something that just can get done uh, all of the sudden, and right? So even with spouses, if one of you know, the spouses, for example, uh, commonly the situation is, you know, the, the wife will make the food, the husband will eat the food, right? That's the, the common situation. But uh, yes. to, appreciate, to appreciate what it is your spouse does, it, it helps to engage and, and participate with them in, in, in the things that they're contributing to the household. You understand and appreciate how much work and effort goes into it. If you've ever stepped into the kitchen uh, as and you're not the main cook in the house, you will very quickly get yelled at uh, because you are going to be doing all the wrong things. And so what you appreciate, you appreciate uh, you know, what goes in to that, that food that gets prepared. And similarly, you know, if, if the husband is doing, uh, you know, uh, if he's bringing in the bread, if he's the one that's working hard to, to provide for the family, then maybe sitting down, uh, you know, children, spouses, whatever, and, 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 and being a part of the process of what is it like to, to, to take care of the family from that perspective? What thoughts do you have to consider when you are working out the finance, et cetera? So it's not necessarily about you know, just these are the only roles that we play in the family. But when we participate and help each other out, there's that appreciation for what the other person does. And then we are right. more willing to help, right? The Prophet ﷺ, when he was asked, how was he like at home? Uh, his wife immediately said, at the service of his family, you know, always there. We needed something. Uh, he, he would he would be there. So that's, that, that, again, it's about that approach of compassion, that approach of, of of unity as you're talking about at a world level. Again, it, it needs to start at home as well that, you know, if somebody needs help with something, we will step up. It's not that, oh, this is their job or their duty or their role, but we are all in this uh, in this together. And inshallah, with this, this initiative, we can take this to the world uh, where we just don't view the world as a separate group of, you know, people living in, you know, uh, different parts of the of the earth, but rather as as a part of one big giant family. Because we are all yeah. descendants of Adam, alayhi salam. Sahih, sahih. And that's such, a, that's such beautiful advice. And you know, one thing that I learned, because I'm constantly traveling. So my, my you know, this teaching deen and, uh, you know, going to the masjids is not my full-time job, right? Which I wish it was. I, I enjoy talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and teaching about deen all the time. But I'm in the healthcare sector, so... I'm constantly traveling around uh, with regards to oncology centers and I'm very rarely home. And I said to my wife, I said, subhanAllah, you know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the ayah, malik al -mulk -mulk man tasha, at the end, he says, al -khair, inna ka ala kulli qadir. and everything has khair inside of it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control of everything. So with this current lockdown, what's happened is, it's made me realize I've got four little kids and it's made me realize subhanallah, my wife is carrying on such a burden. You know what I mean? And, and doing the duty that she's doing, you just go to another level in terms of appreciation of my wife, of what, what she's been doing, raising my children, being outside of the house, constantly dropping off, you know, picking up one child, dropping them off. You've got Quran class, you've got extracurricular classes. And then it dawned on me, my God, when I was memorizing Quran in Atlanta, Al Farooq Masjid was just a masjid, right? That was the only masjid in all of Atlanta. And I remember Sheikh Adnan, when I was nine years old, I just fell in love with the Quran and I wanted to memorize the Quran. And Sheikh Adnan, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him. And, uh, and and give him khair and barakah and bless his life with a lot of barakah, he used to teach me at al And we lived in Norcross. We would drive. My mom would drive me uh, literally uh, an hour and then sit in the parking lot for an hour and then drive back an hour just so I can start memorizing Quran. And you start to realize as a parent, once you become a parent, before you're a parent, you live for achievement and doing what you're going to do. Once you become a parent, you actually live for your children. And that is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also because the one who keeps his children in a good home and they raise them properly, then especially if they've got daughters, the al jannah, 
right? Yep. So it made me realize the value and the difficulty that my wife goes through. And by the way, my wife taught me how to cook. I still think I make a better butter chicken than her. But anyway, I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> even, though she, even though she kills me and everything else. But but uh, but I do try to to help cook, you know. Uh, it's it's a learning process when we're going through yeah. this. And I think what you just mentioned, the tarbiya, taking not just the aspect of iftar, but taking the tarbiya of Islam that Islam instills in us and giving dawah through that is going to be extremely important. And I would love, I, I mean, I'm going, to, I'm going to put it out there on the internet and you're going to have to answer it and it's going to be recorded for life. I am inviting uh -oh. you to Please, please join the initiative with us. Please. I know you've already started, but I would like for you to be one of the ambassadors in Atlanta uh, to help this grow. Inshallah. I would love for you to do that. Inshallah. Do you accept? I accept. <laughs> Prophet Sallam, our Prophet Sallam said, whoever guides towards the goodness shares in the reward. So may Allah SWT bless you for uh, everything that you're doing. And I would love to have a share of that reward, inshallah. <laughs> Jazakallah, khair. Jazakallah khair to your team. I would also, before we end, can you tell us a little bit about RCM and some of the projects that you guys are doing? Because there are a lot of people that are listening. You know, we we uh, we we like to have everyone be promoted. I, whenever I'm there, I'm with Sheikh Ismail and Sheikh Abdul Ghaffar, you know, Georgia Islamic Institute and uh, Mr. Abdullah. But I would love to hear what RCM is doing. I want all of the viewers and all of the listeners to hear also, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, Zakallah khair for that. So RCM is the, the Roswell Community Masjid. And the word community falls in the center because that's what we really revolve around. Alhamdulillah, we revolve around our community. Uh, it is it is a, a an open, welcoming place. You know, we have uh, our tagline. You walk into the masjid, you'll see it written on you know, a poster or somewhere all over the place. It says, uh, come as you are, grow as you like. Uh, we, we're, we're welcoming of everybody. We want people to find an attachment to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you know, every everybody will find something to do and something to contribute. We're always looking for uh, people to make good use of, inshallah, as volunteers. Because again, everything revolves around uh, community, the blessings that we are able to uh, enjoy. They come when people step up and do a lot of good things. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we, you know, we have... Uh, a lot of clubs that are running out of the masjid, all volunteer run uh, for children, for service, for visiting the sick, uh, you know, all different types for new Muslims, etc. Uh, you know, you have your standard, uh, you know, practices that every masjid will have. You know, you'll have, we'll have we have our hips program, we have our our uh, daily worship, ibadat, courses, classes, etc. But really uh, what we, we what we're uh, trying to make sure that we can do is make sure that the masjid can be a place for everyone and anyone that needs to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in uh, many different ways. So if you can't come, then inshallah, join us online, you know, uh, join us through some projects or anything else. Uh, if you can attend, then attend as much as you can. But inshallah, what we're really trying to do is make sure that people have access uh, and an understanding that they can come to Allah azza wa jalla, that they can grow through knowledge, inshallah, uh, and practice. And uh, that they always have a, a place that they can uh, find uh, uh, solace and peace. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to open all of our masajid back up uh, with safety, inshallah. So we can have that place of solace and peace again, inshallah. inshallah. So Imam Anwar, I've got a I mean, I said uh, your last name is Anwar. No Ashad Anwar. I have, I have a question for you. You said you do <laughs> online courses. How can people sign up? Is there any way we can advertise that for you? Uh, you know, I can talk to Sister Shaheen because I know she's on it. Uh, and, and also my yeah. sister, Hina. You know what I mean? But, yeah, uh, but would you... you know, yeah, is it most of our courses or... are uh, on, on site, but uh, because of the, the the lockdown and everything, we we shifted things online. But we just made it open on on Facebook. But uh, all you have to do is go to our website roswellmasjid.org, and everything will be there. We have a wonderful staff uh, of people that are that are committed to making sure that we're communicating in the best possible way. Just want to give a shout out to Sister Lubna, Sister Shannon, Sister Rubina, and Brother Maher, who are these are all staff members at RCM and uh, our wonderful volunteers, like you mentioned, Shaheen and and, and Hina, and, and so many, so many others. Uh, but Alhamdulillah, you know, these are there's there, there's a lot a lot going on, and uh, you know, we're on uh, on Facebook, we're on Instagram, and uh, apparently we're on Twitter. I don't I don't tweet too much. I, I'm I'm not a tweety bird or whatever, but uh, <laughs> we're we're all over the place. Just look up Roswell Masjid, inshallah. <laughs> By the way, I have to let all the viewers know, 
I don't even have the passwords to my Instagram. Uh, I think I've got a Facebook page and Twitter. I have no passwords to it. It's just the students just, just they listen to some of the things that I do and they'll put up a quote. They've got me doing the odd drops, uh, like the mic drop. Uh, so, so I'm doing, uh, and basically just looking at very important thoughts. So, I completely yeah. know how you feel when you talk about Twitter. I have no idea about social media. <laughs> uh, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, except all of them. Now, before we let you go, I yeah. have to, uh, I have to have to let everyone that's watching, watch the video that inspired everyone uh, else to start. <laughs> would you mind let's watching it, it with me? I would love to, man. I haven't seen it in a while. And do you want to do you want to give a a a play by play play commentary as to who's in the video? You know, as sure. it goes on. Inshallah, Absolutely. Inshallah. Yeah. I'm going to ask our brothers, brother Ismail and Sayed. Uh, Ismail's from the VMCS, the Bristol Muslim uh, Muslim Society, as well as uh, Sayed from Alwakia. They're running the back room, so I'm going to ask Bless them. You. Bismillah. Let's go ahead and go and uh, and let's enjoy this video again. Inshallah. <laughs> رمضان يا رمضان يا نفحة الرحمن رمضان يا رمضان شهر جود وغفران رمضان يا رمضان يا نفحة الرحمن رمضان يا رمضان شهر جود وغفران كل عام يأتي زائر ليته دوما يطول دائما يحمي البشائر كلنا يرجو القبول أنت فيك الخير ضعفا فيك تحقيق الأمان نسأل المولى قبولا يا إلهي يا رجائي MashaAllah. <laughs> yeah, those were all, that was our staff, MashaAllah, from our communications person to our executive director, Brother Maher, our operations manager, Sister Lubna, our Sunday school. And then uh, the last person you saw was Ustada Fatima, who is our, uh, our Ustada, our uh, part of our religious affairs team. May Allah SWT accept from all of them. May Allah SWT accept from your team, MashaAllah, everything that they're doing in the background to make this happen and get this out to everybody. Inshallah, when I come back to Atlanta, I'll definitely come down and see you guys, inshallah. And you have to. You have to now. Yes. Please visit us in the UK also. Uh, you have a huge platform here, inshallah. Inshallah. Allah bless and accept. Barakallah fikum. Barakallah fikum, inshallah. Jazakallah al khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuhu. Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah al khair to Imam Arshad, who's from RCM Masjid. Alhamdulillah, we've got uh, people that, as you can see, Islam is so beautiful because we have everyone from all walks of life, from everywhere around the world that have the same fiqh. Everyone has that same thought process that we have, and we have people that actually care. We have imams and scholars that care. We have you as individuals that care about the wellness of the ummah and the wellness of the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless everyone that has come on. Uh, we also have someone that is local, uh, Brother Tariq Khan, uh, who is a very close friend of uh, Brother Zain Bicha. Uh, as you know, uh, Zain Bicha, a, uh, a brother that gives beautiful nasheeds who is sick. Uh, we were trying to get him on, but he is not well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless Brother Zain. May he remove him of his sickness. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him uh, khair, baraka, shifa kamina ajira. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and illuminate him with the beautiful words that he sings about, about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're going to bring on Brother Tariq, uh, who we call, you know, the funny thing is in the private chat, uh, I'm getting Uncle Tariq is on. So uh, I'm hoping that I'm not being called uncle in the back as well, uh, as, as I've got the white beard. But before I bring on Brother Tariq, I would like to say a major, major jazakallah khair to every single person that has been part of this team. Wallahi, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase your risk of halal and tayyibah. May he remove any difficulties that is hap that, that you may be going through. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you in your life, bless you and, in, and increase you 
in this dunya and give you Jannat al Firdaus in Akhirah to all the ambassadors, all of the uh, volunteers, those that were distributing, those that have been working like crazy. Jazakallah khair for all of the help that you guys have done. Without further ado, I will ask uh, uh, Uncle Tariq, <laughs> Brother Tariq, to come on. Uh, by the way, Sheikh Omar has just texted me. He would like to come on uh, at 8.40 p.m. UK time, which is uh, which is 3.40 p.m. Eastern Standard and uh, and I think 2.40 p.m. Central and 1.40 p.m. Uh, Pacific. Sorry, I'm going through all of this. Brother Tariq, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sheikh. How are you? How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Doing well, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Very nice seeing you, man. You look younger every time I see you. Yeah, well, it's, it's, the, it's the blessing of Ramadan, mashallah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, it's the barakah of Ramadan, right? So listen, I, I, I wanted to bring you on to say major jazakallah al khair. Uh, you know, Brother Zain Bika, unfortunately, he's gotten sick. But mashallah, he sent out a shout out saying that he's participating. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you for uh, for that connection. Also with Brother Shai Dakram, whose son is actually in the background helping us out, Ismail. Now tell us, I saw a video of you where someone sent it to me, where it's you, Brother, I think, Gufran? Uh, and Gufraz. Gufraz. And who Gufraz. else will yeah. with you? And yeah. tell, us, tell us a little bit about this video that you guys were doing. I know, I know mm -hmm. there's social distancing going on. I know there are no cars in the road. But you guys are on a suspension bridge and doing a video for, for World of Thought Day. Can you, can you tell the people what was going on? Well, actually, all the credit is down to you. Because it is you that inspired the Sheikh to do this. Um, I mean, you know, I've seen some of the programs early on. I was working, mashallah, fantastic program today. Children coming on. Um, amazing efforts made by you and everybody in backstage. And yes, we have many titles, brother, uncle. Ismail's my nephew. I'll love you, please, with him working in the background, hence the, the title. I'll, I'll take it, no problem. Um, but, but like this, this pandemic, you know, people have had a strange time last few months and people have been confused um, and don't know how to react and, and deal with day-to-day -day life. Same with this Ramadan. This Ramadan has been quite ajeeb, yes? Um, although some would say it's authentic, but for us, it's a different because we cannot go to the masjid. Uh, there's no Tarawiyah, there's no Juma. Um, so people are finding ways to connect. And, uh, and the buzz that, that you created with this word Iftar Day has been absolutely phenomenal. And I think you were saying earlier in the day, every country bar from uh, Antarctica has been connected with this? Every continent, every continent. Yeah, alhamdulillah, continent. we received, yeah, yeah, we received videos and participation from every continent in the world. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, and, and the, the global, um, you know, what you said a few days ago, the humanity bringing together this unity and connecting through iftar. I mean, the whole world knows Muslims fast. Everybody knows it's Ramadan. And Ramadan is, is a blessing. And in my estate where I live, it's like a bisto advert. They wait for the plate of food to come when they know it's Ramadan. Everybody gets a different day, a turn by turn by turn. And it's yeah. amazing. So it's for a whole mankind to share, not just for Muslims. Although we obviously, it's, it's further on us, but everybody to participate, you know, while in the lockdown, I think it's uh, amazing what you've achieved, mashallah, Sheikh, and jazakallah khair for creating this buzz, uh, which goes on to the bike ride you talk about. We, we, we go on the weekends, me, Gulfraz, Brother Shazan, and my younger brother, brother Abdul Majid. So we said, okay, we'll make a video, rather than doing it at home and doing it with food, we'll do it on a suspension bridge. We put Bristol on the globe. So <laughs> we, bridge is empty. We crossed on it and we thought, here we are. Let's give a shout out uh, to the World Iftar Day 18 of May 2020, um, you know, with, with a bit of difference. So we were quite excited. So we're just happy to do it because, what, you know, Bristol's I iconic, uh, you know, place is the suspension bridge. And so, so really credit goes to you to inspire us to do it, mashallah. So, so first of all, you know, you're, you're. I consider you not just my brother, but I also consider you to be one of my students, right? My close students. Like, and so, I have to, well, look, a wala, right? A wala, a wala. <laughs> and I know you're a major, major uh, Ertrol fan, uh, and I suggest everyone to to go watch it. It's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful series that that actually gives us an insight and, and teaches about Iman, right? It, it, it's, it's a beautiful thing that's come about, but I love how you did the Ewa love, but I have to say something. It's not me. 
it's it's not me. This this initiative is Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He's the one that taught us to give food to everyone. He's the and and it's and it's the Anbiya as well. Remember Ibrahim alayhi salam. One of my ustads was explaining that the reason why he was known as the Khalid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, was because he did not like to eat alone. He would always invite someone to have food with him. And that's a sunnah that I really, really, when I was contemplating on that hadith, that I would love to revive this sunnah. At least I can do something before I pass away, right? Do a little bit of good before I pass away so that this can be sadaqah jariah for me, but not just for me. Every single person that joins in and every single person that participates, mashallah, they are the ones that are going to get benefit in this as well. How amazing is that, right? Now, 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 imagine this 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 deed that you guys did. I was actually going to ask you to get all four of the brothers on. It's got you on in between uh, the 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 ulama, right? It's got you in sandwich in between, right? Because I just want to get an understanding. How was the feeling at home? I mean, when you were going through Ramadan, even before we announced the World Iftar Day, what was the feeling at home? What was going on? I was just trying to plan how we're going to. Uh, prepare Tarawi, um, you know, and, and the good thing about this, you know, I, I've, this, you know, there's hair and everything, as we know, and, you know, I've spent more time with mum, my own mum, mashallah, my older mum was 80 plus and gives you salam, by the way, and keep saying, Taraweeh, so, bete, jite reho. So, we shout out for mum, mashallah, giving you duas. But we did spend so much time with my mum. Uh, I lead the Isha and my son Isa, he leads the Tarawi. Um, You know, the family praying behind us. And I think the time, and all the brothers will agree with me, because we live like, you know, our, our, our rut race sort of style life. Like we were rushing, rushing, as soon as the iftar is done, uh, Maghrib, and, and within a half an hour, you're in the masjid. So we're spending this time with the family, you know, like Prophet Sallam said, don't meet your homes as ghost homes. So we are we are establishing Tarawi at home with the family and spending the time, and they're actually enjoying it, you know, from my youngest, uh, Hanifa, 12 years old, right to my mum, 81. It's absolutely so empowering to be able to pray in Jama'at with your family, um, rather than, because the women miss out a lot of the time. We go to the mosque, they don't see this. So they're actually enjoying it more than we are, I would say, um, to have the family unit together. So now I'm going to put you on the spot. I yeah. have to put you on the spot. <laughs> As you I'm normally do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love you, that's why I do it, right? Are you leading or is Isa leading? I'm, I'm leading the Isha, Ooh, and, really? and and Isa is leading the Tarawiya. Mashallah! So you're 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 an Imam as well now. Well, sort of, yeah, mini Imam, but I'm trying. But Alhamdulillah, I haven't had any crackers yet, so it's okay. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> but you're okay. So are you are you doing the Inna Ataina Kulhu Allahu Had, or are you reading some bigger surahs? No, no, big bigger surahs. I start with Surah Hashar, <laughs> the, the last few really? ayahs. Yeah, and then the thirty years towards the end. Alhamdulillah. So, so I'm going to turn this into into what what I was doing earlier on with the Kids Zone show. Uh, you're going to need to recite Surah Hashir for us. No, no, bro. Don't put me on top. <laughs> my 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 tajweed is tweaking. It's, a, it's 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 not that good. But I, Isa said it. it's okay. He passed it. Alhamdulillah. Isa, no, no, mashallah. Isa is mashallah. I've I've heard his Quran and I've heard his recitation. Mashallah. He's he's amazing. You know what I mean? But mashallah, that's awesome that you guys, I mean, you're praying in Jama'ah. I know the sisters, your your wife and your mom and your daughters are probably just absolutely enjoying this, especially being so far away, right? I mean, you're 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 completely in distance. Your brother lives in the same city and subhanAllah, you're not able to even have him come yeah. over. Yes, it's strange. Really, really strange. Yeah. So I've got a question for you. Next year, uh, I'm going to put a couple of tasks on you. Uh, we we are building up, mashallah. We've got a beautiful team that's built up here in Bristol, and also, mashallah, you're one of your best friends, Fawad, right? Oh, mashallah. mashallah, subhanallah, him and uh, and and actually not even him. He's just busy eating pakoras. But uh, <laughs> yes, brother, brother Fawad, for you. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but his wife Sadia, mashallah, is doing an excellent job. I mean, we've got Sister Syra. Actually, I'm not going to go into na naming names because we have such a long list of ambassadors mm -hmm. and people that have helped us out. But you're going to have to get involved, and I'm going to keep you on one thing. 
since we're going to have the physical iftars that are going to take place, uh, where and by the way, we're going to make the announcement of uh, of the World Iftar Day based off of the moon sighting. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to link it to the Gregorian calendar. Uh, so we're going to do it on the first of Ramadan, so everyone knows when it is. Uh, but it's going to be on either the nineteenth or the twentieth of Ramadan. Um, and the reason why we're going to do that is because we don't want to impede on anyone's itikaf right in the last 10 nights because it's not fair on those that are going to have to clean up afterwards yeah. to miss out on such a blessed on one of the blessed nights so it's going to be either 19th or 20th yeah. uh depending you know it doesn't matter because we're going to ma we're going to peg it to the gregorian date but you're going to have to i'm going to give you a list of not just individuals that you need to bring on and you know one of them but we're going to have certain tasks that everyone is going to have to do. You know what I mean? Are you up for it? At your service, Sheikh. <laughs> Inshallah. Inshallah. By the way, I do want to thank you. Uh, and I want to give a heartfelt thanks to all of the ambassadors. Wallahi, everyone that has been calling, just, just literally cold calling, WhatsApping, everyone, saying thank you very much, asking people to send information in, Wallahi, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it that Allah Allah increases them and all of the effort that they have done. I know, I know I'm difficult to work with sometimes and I have some great big ideas, but subhanAllah, it's amazing. I want everyone to go onto the Instagram page and the Facebook page that has just been put up 10 days and we've got people coming in. You can see who the ambassadors are, but I want everyone to make dua for them, please. Make make dua for them. It would be it would be amazing. There was one more. I don't know uh, if we could get Hassan Ahmed on because uh, Hassan is actually one of the brother-in-laws and brother of uh, of the of one of the uh, ambassadors. But mashallah, he did the one thousand mile. I think it was. Yes. What was the bike ride that they did? The one thousand miles. Mashallah. Mashallah. Group, but there's a few of them, but he, I think, instigated it. But 1,000 miles, mashallah. He's, he's Alhamdulillah. Smashed it. Alhamdulillah. No, no, inshallah. I, I would like to get him on probably uh, tomorrow or the day after onto, onto one, of the, uh, one of the programs that I do. I think he completed it today with all the other brothers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless everyone. Uh, that has worked so hard on this, inshallah. And look, subhanallah, you, you, you I thought, I thought we were going to have uh, Brother Zain Bika, but he's sick. Please yeah, make. Uh, he gives, gives his salams, but uh, he's not been well. But uh, alhamdulillah, yeah. you know, he's, he's a very humble person, and he would love to have come on the stage. It would have been a nice treat for everybody. And uh, yeah. you know, he also uh, commends the work you're doing with the group, mashallah. With you. And you know, we, you're giving a praise to everybody else. If I can button, if you don't mind, Sheikh, you know, I would like to. Give a shout out to your family, you know, to mom, you know, to uh, your wife, sister-in-laws, uh, work they're putting in endlessly and to be doing this. And, you know, my, my daughter Ikra says, when does Auntie, uh, um, you know, Shabn make iftar then? And when does Auntie Yasmina make this uh, iftar then? I said, look, they're all busy. You know what our sheikh's like, he takes us to the wire, but it all happens, alhamdulillah. It all happens, alhamdulillah. So big shout out to all your family and Allah be pleased with them all the efforts they're making behind the scenes. Yeah, you know, they they always, you know, all the people that are that are involved, mashallah, they've been up all night, all day, uploading, I don't even know how many videos and pictures we had. You know what I mean? Uh, so, so alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, it's, it's, it's been amazing. It's been amazing. You know what I mean? And jazakallah khair, you know, uh, now you're going to have to do a nasheed before we go. Oh no, come on, Sheikh. <laughs> it, it's bad enough me going into the masjid and you perform in Juma and I do this and you you freeze your middle of khutbah and you say, what do you want me to do? But I'm just trying to give you salam. <laughs> do you remember? It happens every time. But <laughs> no, I didn't bring no, peace. <laughs> no, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. No, jazakallah al-khair for, uh, for coming on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you in good company and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always, always Bring khair and barakah into your family and love into your family. Tell your wife, Jazakallah khair, because I know she's been watching. Mashallah, she's always answering questions yes. uh, that, that I'm always asking. Mashallah, she's taking notes down. I know your daughters, uh, they, they they message me also, uh, you know, asking questions, very difficult questions. But mashallah, it's, it's amazing having engagement from, you know, your family and and the whole of the Bristol community. You know, mashallah, it's, it's, it's amazing. 
Alhamdulillah. So, mashallah, you've made the Ramadan very light with your knowledge, your sharing, and with the programs. It's very important, you know, that, you know, that, and Ramadan comes and goes so quickly. You know, we don't, you know, realize sometimes, but we look, we're already, already in the last few days. And normally we're doing Qiyam with you last 10 days and we know what happens and step up, step up, step up. And it's like, anyway, you always, you always, you always manage to find the time. And we brothers behind you, but we say, Sheikh Faroz, Sheikh with a difference. You always find the extra time. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know what I'm missing? I know we've got one minute before uh, and, and we're waiting on Sheikh Omar to come on. But you know one thing that uh, that a lot of people are missing is the the talk, the adhkar, and then the qiyamul layl. And the thing that I love and, and what I'm missing is, but I'm getting to do it with my children. You know how we do the adhkar, the la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, and then we go into... Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm really, really missing that because you're in the masjid. It's only me that's saying it out loud. Everyone is saying it quietly. But that love that we've got is amazing, you know. Inshallah, inshallah. Wait for the lockdown to come up. We're one one of the first things we need to do is gather at the masjid and do some qiyam and, and do some adhkar, inshallah. inshallah. Looking forward to that again, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, Habibi. Barakallah fake, inshallah. Now, um, while we are waiting on Sheikh Umar to come on, um, I would like to mention that there was a competition, and unfortunately, I was put uh, to judge the competition. Um, there is one, it was a competition of drinks and uh, who has the most appetizing drink. There was a sister that sent in from Amber Photography. Uh, from I think it was Hamel Hampstead uh, that uh, that had sent it in. Subhanallah, you win. However, I have to say this was one of the most difficult uh, difficult competitions that I had to judge on because everything looked lush. When I'm looking at it during the month of Ramadan and I'm fasting and I'm thinking, you know what? The award for the person who's going to win should be that they make the drink for everyone on the world iftar day and the ambassadors but then again you're not you're going to get reward as well as award no but inshallah inshallah bi'ithnillah bi'ithnillah you sent in a beautiful picture uh that drink looked amazing you know and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and reward you if you can please get in touch with our team they will they will take down your uh your details uh, and we want to send out a special gift from us that we would do. You're seeing the lush drink. Oh my God. Uh, I've still got 25 minutes before I break my fast, but you can see it's a beautiful drink that is there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to all have beautiful drinks like this. And may Allah give you this drink in Jannah, inshallah, and a better drink in Jannah which is going to be the rivers of honey and milk, inshallah. Jazakallah al-khair uh, for winning the competition. Again, it was uh, Sister Amber uh, or Ambar, uh, uh, photography from Hamel in Hampstead. Jazakallah al-khair, inshallah. Uh, I've just gotten a text message. Sheikh Omar is saying that he is just uh, logging in. Uh, so inshallah, we're just waiting on, on him to log in. Uh, just a couple of minutes now, and I know he's very, very busy. So it's it's uh, it's a major major treat for us to have him online, and again, this is all of your hard work that you guys have done. Inshallah, this is the first stepping stone. And if you remember, the Badri Sahaba that were with the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they were always always given a higher rank. Whenever Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam talked about, you know, ranks, talked about the Sahaba that were there in the in the in in Badr. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam always gave them the utmost respect. So those of you that have participated in the first year, initial year, you will always be the iftari sahaba and sahabi. <laughs> you guys, you guys will be called not uh, not just the uh, the badris. You will be called the iftaris. Inshallah, bismillah. Inshallah. I think we've got uh, Sheikh Omar Suleiman who has just come on. Uh, I would ask that uh, that inshallah he be coming on. Salam alaikum, Sheikh. Kif halak. How are you doing, Habibi? Alhamdulillah. Sheikh Umar, number one, I would like to thank you very, very much. I mean, subhanAllah, within you know a short period of time, you have accepted uh, to come on. 
Uh, I would like to say Jazakallah khair. I know you're running uh, Maker Institute and you've got a lot of programs going on. So Jazakallah khair for having us, you know, as uh, for coming on as a guest. Well, yeah. Inshallah. Sheikh Omar, I just wanted to uh, get some insights. I'm going to go quiet. They've been listening to me for way too long. I would like for you to just give us your insight on the spiritual aspect of the breaking of the fast and the benefit of breaking of the fast and the initiative that we have to be able to bring Muslims and non-Muslims around the world to be able to break fast together throughout Ramadan, which is our initiative, inshallah. Yeah, so, you know, we know that the, the first goal uh, of fasting is obviously taqwa, is that we become more aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we become more aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we become more aware of uh, His right upon us to be worshipped uh, unconditionally, obeyed unconditionally, worshipped alone, then that also makes us more aware of His blessings upon us. And when we become more aware of His blessings upon us, we become more aware of those that don't have easy access to those blessings on a regular basis. And there is a spiritual connection to the practice of hunger in particular um, that comes through the fast of Ramadan. So uh, I know that as we as we broaden sometimes the, um, the meanings, and when I say broaden, not in a way that's disingenuous, in a way that allows us to extract the maximum fawad, the maximum benefits and gems from the practice of fasting. Sometimes we get away from the bare basics, right? And so Taqwa and shukur, right? Becoming more mindful of Allah and becoming more grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when it comes to the development of empathy for those that don't typically have those blessings, uh, one, of the, one of the things that happens is that, you know, we, we disconnect sometimes our own personal inability to fast from the uh, expiation for that and our own Eid from the fact that everyone else has to have Eid. So the fact that if a person cannot um, fast permanently, that they have to offer a fidya where they have to feed someone, uh, the fact that on Eid al-Fitr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it such that everyone should be able to feast on Eid, it would completely defeat the purpose if at the end of Ramadan, we neglect everyone and we go back to our, you know, to our, to our own feasts and we say, you know, we're done our practice, just as it's inappropriate spiritually on an individual level, it's inappropriate on a community basis as well. So feeding the people, especially as hunger is on the rise, is so crucial. And that is something that should overwhelm everyone around us in the nighttime. Now, Jazakallah khair. That is such a beautiful message that you have just given, because that is something that uh, that I was actually giving a khutbah about, well, not a khutbah, an on by bayan about, was the importance of making sure that we give our fidya before the end of Ramadan. You know, unfortunately, we wait way too long, and then those that should enjoy it, they don't actually receive it. Uh, Sheikh Omar, uh, the, as you know, um, you know, one of the one of the reasons of the initiatives was the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that I was doing uh, a little bit of the on where he said, Afshir Salam, uh, well, he says, Ya Ayyu an Nas. He doesn't even say, Ya Ayyu al Muslimun. He says, Ya Ayyu an Nas. And then he says, Afshir Salam, Wa Atimu Ta'am. And then, obviously, with the Silat al Rahim and, uh, and the Salu bil Layl. And that's one of the ways where you enter into Jannah, Tadkhulu al Jannah al Salam. And one of the things I was actually reflecting on, and, and maybe you can expound upon, is when you actually give food to someone, it not only softens their heart, but also it brings them close to you, and that becomes the ultimate time of giving dawah. How would you suggest we go about in terms of making this not just an accepted day with the UN, but also a day that we as Muslims can utilize as a springboard to to let the world know what Islam is really about. Yes, I mean, there's a saying from Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Kuna du'atan illa wa antum salmitun. Be callers to Allah even as you're quiet. And they said, how was that? And he said, with your husn al-khuluq, with your good character. And the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu where he uh, said that, in the nas in fa'ahum nas the best of people are those that are most beneficial to the people. And then he said that, Habu al-Ammari Allah, the three most beloved deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and tutfil ala qalbi akhika suhura that you enter into inner joy into the heart of your brother that you remove a debt from him or that you feed him a loaf of bread and so those are the that is the way that the prophet described 
uh, describe good character, right? And Omar radiallahu ta'ala anhu was saying that Hrisn al is the greatest form of da'wah. Uh, essentially, you know, the way that we, uh, the way that we are able to effectively demonstrate the mercy of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, both in the message of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as well as the character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is to manifest it to the best of our ability. In the same way that, uh, you know, ar-Rahimun yarhamuhum ar-Rahman, okay, that, that the most merciful uh, shows mercy, that, that the most merciful shows mercy to those that are merciful on this earth. Ar-Rahimun fil ard yarhamuhum fil sama. The same way that that is the case. Uh, the, and so the, the way that we come to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, honor the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by manifesting when possible uh, what we desire from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgiveness and mercy and generosity. Uh, the same way, what can we manifest of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a way that uh, we are effective messengers of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by our very being. And I think that's the goal, inshallah ta'ala, that uh, it's no strings attached, you know. So, so da'wah is a, a consequence of khidmah. But khidmah yeah. does not only happen for da'wah. Da'wah is no. a natural consequence of khidmah. It's a natural consequence of service. But service happens regardless because you, you serve for the, for the virtue of service in and of itself. And then the da'wah is, uh, is, is, just, is built off of that natural essence of who we are. Yeah. Would you suggest that uh, those that participate, that become ambassadors, and by the way, I would love for you to be an ambassador uh, in your state, in your city. Uh, you know, one, one, of the, one of the things that we want to do right now, we're doing it virtually because of the lockdown, but we actually want to go into each of the cities throughout the world and be able to provide, not, not us provide, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses us as asbab uh, to be able to provide that hot meal, not just one night eventually doing it all 30 nights in Ramadan, because our motto is no human should go to sleep at night hungry in the month of Ramadan, regardless if you're Muslim or Qayyim Muslim. I would, I, number one, I'm inviting you to please, please support us, you know, through, you, you can even change the name if you want. It, it doesn't make a difference. As long as we can establish the Sunnah, I would love to do that. You know, but the other, the other question that I've got for you before, I know uh, we had scheduled only uh, 10 minutes, but I just want to end off on one thing, is the spiritual aspect of understanding what we are doing with the sunnah of Rasulullah also when we give, and should we be physically giving, and what that what that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is when you physically give that sadaqah. Yeah, I mean, and that's something, so here in, in, in Texas, I mean, we we actually have a Everyone eats um, is is the is the hashtag that a bunch of Muslim businesses and um, charities oh, no. come together to do. So we fed, you know, the, the, well, I don't want to say we because that would suggest a disproportionate amount of involvement. I've done very little compared to the brothers and sisters, mashallah, sure. a lot to feed thousands of people every single week, provide thousands of face masks, and uh, even free COVID nineteen testing uh, drive throughs uh, where people can have easier access to testing, and. Um, you know, I, I think that there's something special. You know, when, when Abu Hurairah ta'ala anhu said, uh, a man complained to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa about the hardness of his heart. He, the Prophet sallallahu told him, yamsah al to actually accompany an orphan to share food and to, to caress the hair of an orphan because that would make it a lot more personal than merely sponsoring. Now, uh, we can do things, we should give charity and support those that are on the ground because it's not realistic to expect everyone to be on the ground, especially not under these conditions. But every Muslim yes. should aspire to have some level of volunteerism in their lives uh, to where inshallah. they go out and they do these things themselves on a regular basis, inshallah. Uh, Jazakallah khair, we're definitely going to take that advice from you. We would love to get to know, uh, you know where everyone eats. Uh, we would like to partner with them. Uh, we don't care about names or banners. We just want to fulfill the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You know, Sheikh Omar, uh, it's coming up to uh, our adhan time in uh, in London, in the UK, and also in Bristol. I'm going to put you on the spot, uh, and I'm going to ask if you can make the closing du'a for us, inshallah. If you can, if you can do that, I'd really, really appreciate it. Inshallah. Inshallah. inshallah.
Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta al-sami'u al-alim Wa tub alayna innaka anta al-tawab al-rahim Allahumma ya muqallib al-kulub Thabit kulubna ala dinik Rabbana la tuzik kulubna ba'da idha daytana Wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka anta al-wahab Rabbana innaka jami'u al-nasi li yawmin la rayba fi Inna Allah la yukhlif al-mi'ad ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لا نكونن من الخاسرين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنا من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنا من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنا من الظالمين اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عنا oh Allah we ask you to accept the fast of those that are breaking their fast we ask you to accept the intention of those who wanted to fast but could not fast. And we ask you, O oh Allah, to unite us all under your rahmah and to forgive us for our shortcomings. We ask you, O oh Allah, to gather us with our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Jannah's with the dose and to make us able representatives of him in this world. Ya Allah, we ask you to grant us husn al-khitam, to make the best of our fast, the last of it, and to make the best of our days, the last of them, the best of our deeds, the last of them and to allow us to meet you while you are pleased with us. Amin, amin, thumma, amin. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. And, you know, inshallah, whenever you're in the UK, please do hit us up. Uh, and inshallah, when I come to Texas, I'll hit you up, inshallah. That's good. Jazakallah khair. alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair to Sheikh Omar uh, for coming on. MashaAllah. He is, uh, he's an amazing, amazing uh, individual. I would like to also mention that they are doing a fundraise. So please, please go to Yaqeen Institute and, uh, and, and give to Yaqeen Institute. RCM also, uh, they're doing a fundraise. Give to them. There's a fundraise that's going on at Majid Abdullah, which is uh, one of the places that I've studied from, as well as Sheikh Abdul Ghaffar's, which is at Georgia Islamic Institute, please give to them. Uh, there is uh, Majid, uh, I think it's Majid Islam uh, with Qadi Fazullah, one of my other teachers. I beg you guys, please support all of these institutions. Sheikh Omar is doing an amazing job uh, in terms of teaching about deen. Uh, Sheikh Ibrahim is doing a great job. Imam uh, Imam Arshad is doing a great job. And even even my Ustad, subhanAllah, wallah, if I can show you the video, uh, I don't know how to show you the video, but Sheikh Ismail is literally on the ground in Sierra Leone passing out food packs where places they don't have food to eat in Ramadan, and they're doing all of this hard work. So please, my brothers and sisters in Islam, the work doesn't stop just because the 18th of May finishes. The work just began. It's just beginning. And inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give hidayah to. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all hidayah to be able to carry on his work and to be able to carry out whatever was the work that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa taught us. This is where when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا We should have no differences we are one ummah and we should hold on tight to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm asking you to please join us. Contact us if you want to be an ambassador next year. Please remember, tomorrow the work starts for next year. We don't know who's going to be alive next year or not. So the work has to start today, tomorrow. We're going to enjoy today, but it starts tomorrow. And we start to work towards next year to really build this. I am inviting every one of you to join us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Those, again, I keep mentioning the ambassadors, those that were working diligently and so hard, putting up the, the messages and everything. I am making so much dua that Allah blesses you. And those that weren't able to get involved physically, but you made dua and you have supported us and are still supporting us, I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you and allows you to come on. Please follow us on Instagram and Facebook. I'm not an online type of person, right? But inshallah, whatever it takes to make sure that the sunnah gets spread out, we will do this inshallah. 
Jazakallah khair. It's close to breaking our fast. I want you to go ahead, make dua. Don't forget to make the dua of breaking your fast. And I want to say, I love you for the sake of Allah. And I ask that you love us for the sake of Allah. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.